Hello, my name is Michael Hansen, and I am talking today about uh, thumb sucking and uh, some of the devastating consequences that come with that from a craniofacial um, and airway point of view, um, and as well as what we typically do to address it. Um, as I mentioned, thumb sucking can be can be a, a, a pretty have a pretty severe and devastating effect on the the jaws, <clears throat> which then trickle back to have troubles with the joints and the airway and many other things. So uh, I wanted to share a case with you about um, a five year old child that we had intervened with who um, is still. Um, sucking his thumb at this point in the game. And you can see that it's created a good open bite <clears throat> and impaired his, his tongue function already because his tongue's sticking through there as kind of a regular, regular posture. Um, when we look at his teeth themselves, we see a lot of information here that tells us about what the thumb is doing. Um, you know, we see this on the upper left hand corner of the screen, we see this uh, arch beginning to narrow in and almost looks like it's conforming around the thumb, around the thumb itself, you can almost see a thumb imprint in there. Um, and the teeth are tipping in, things are just becoming small and what's happening there is that the, the thumb is putting pressure in on the palate, the cheeks are pushing in on the sides uh, with some pretty good force and <clears throat> all the while the tongue has to sit below that thumb so it rests low uh, and creates a suckling motion uh, in a forward and back direction that um, is counterproductive to the growth of the upper jaw and can help the lower jaw get a little bit bigger so you know we see as that happens, like I mentioned, the arch begins to narrow, the vault of the palate or the roof of the mouth starts to arch up and, and as it arches up like that, remember the, the roof of the mouth is also the floor of the nose. So we see that that bone starts to impinge into the nasal airway, <laughs> makes things a little more difficult um, from a nasal airway perspective, often leads to mouth breathing. Um, in his case, we, he's got a he's got an open bite, meaning that the upper upper teeth don't overlap the lower teeth like they're supposed to. They've they've kind of um, conformed and moved around that thumb and probably what he's doing with his tongue when the thumb's not there, uh, which just exacerbates the problem. And in his case, he's made a compensation as that becomes narrower and narrower up top and larger on the bottom. Um, quite often, the child will compensate by shifting his jaw to one side or the other because it becomes easier to eat. Um, the teeth are no longer, when they're end to end, it's hard to chew. You have to overlap a little bit to get good, um, good chewing function. So they will often shift their jaw make a functional shift to one side or the other. In this particular case, he's he's moved to the right and developed a, a, a tongue thrust to go with it. I'll show you a little bit more what I mean by that. If we look at this, <clears throat> just this picture alone, um, we can see that the, the bottom teeth over here on the right are on the outside of the upper teeth. Well, it's just the opposite over here on the left. This is what the way it should be. And a lot of people may look at this and say, oh shoot, he's growing differentially because you know one side is, is growing bigger than the other. But in this particular case, and in many cases, it's that's not what's happening. The, the jaw has just shifted. Um, we can see that when we look at where that midline, the midpoint of the upper jaw is relative to the lower, it, it is definitely shifted to the patient right. And when we look at uh, when we look at the 
the jaw joint itself, um, if we look at the left side or the right side, excuse me, it's the, the little um, hinge point of that jaw represented here, this is the ear canal, is kind of shoved up and high into the socket more than it should be. The one on the left um, is a little hard to see, but it's pulled down and out of the socket. And so the whole uh, mandible is rotating and shifting to the patient right. Um, right now, it's just moved them out of socket a little bit. If that were left to continue growing like that for a long period of time, eventually the jaw makes a correction and you do get this unilateral growth and uh, asymmetric growth of the, of the mandible or lower jaw, which becomes very difficult to address later on. Um, in this particular case, though, we measured the, uh, the skull, um, and take a good look at where the bones are and develop a, a plan for him. Um, we can see that it's had a, a pretty rough effect on the tongue itself. Um, quite often our thumb suckers will develop a very low tongue posture. So this is a profile x-ray. We're kind of looking at them from the side like this. Obviously his nose here, lips um, open. So, you know, probably breathing through his mouth rather than through his nose, which is why this adenoid tissue is getting nice and big like that. Um, soft palate sitting here. This tongue should be sealed all the way up here. And so it's just a solid gray from here to here. But instead we see it sitting low. Um, that can have a pretty tough effect on the airway itself. Um, he's very, very restricted um, and uh, showing some signs of some sleep disordered breathing issues that go along with that. Um, because as we uh, we'll back up and look at this, uh, as that upper jaw narrows in and the lower jaw shifts to the side, but it also shifts back. And, and uh, as it's shifting back, that's where a lot of that restriction is coming from. In, if we look at it without the bones in the way we can just see from the side and from the front, front how restricted that is. Um, so we develop a plan, place him in an appliance um, and uh, have him wear this, turn the gears to help the upper jaw get bigger um, and work on that thumb uh, habit, of course, a thumb. Um, you know, uh, is a, a substitute for for the the suckling reflex, um, which stimulates some of the nerve tissue just behind the front teeth in a, in a um, a very sensitive nerve center there. That when stimulated, um, you know, can release endorphins, make you feel good, which is why the kids will will do that. Um, but obviously has a lot of pretty negative consequences. So the appliance covers that area so you can't get to it. Um, this, this appliance is removable. Um, and so this little turkey would, uh, when nobody was looking, would take the appliance out and continue to suck his thumb. And if somebody, was, if, if mom looked over, he'd pop it back in really quick. And, and uh, so we ended up placing some tongue tamers on the front teeth so that when he did take it out, it was still difficult to suck the thumb. And that seemed to be what did the trick in this case. Um, and uh, with about six months of semi-compliant uh, therapy here and where, we were able to get him balanced again. And you can see that the, the midlines have corrected. So as we've expanded that upper jaw and made it big enough to house the lower jaw, it has self-corrected and lined up straight again um, with the upper jaw so that now the joints are balanced again and the bite is closed so it's easier to work on correcting the uh, tongue thrust that had developed. 
and um, just really made a big impact on his life, being able to correct that at this point in the game rather than deal with it throughout the rest of his life. Um, certainly would have continued to have airway issues, joint problems, um, and, and all the things that come along with that. Um, so again, midlines lined up um, and ultimately a, a very good successful correction there. So um, beware of thumb sucking. And uh, if you do recognize it and um, can stop it early enough, uh, sometimes the body can correct itself. But if it goes you know, later into life like this child, um, some intervention as we've illustrated here, uh, sometimes it's the best course of action to stave off some pretty big problems. So I thank you for tuning in and look forward to our next one.